Welcome to the Story Tinker Podcast, a place for in-depth analysis of Webtoon stories. Co-hosted by sharp, witty, and dare I say thirsty fans, we dive deep into every episode, analyzing character struggles, relationship development, and of course, theories. You can follow the Story Tinker on YouTube, podcast platforms, and social media. For bonus content, sneak peeks, and more, you can support the Story Tinker on Patreon. We are really appreciative of your likes, subscribes, and follows on all platforms. Thank you for listening to The Story Tinker, and let's get started. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Midnight Poppy Land, episode 89, and on The Story Tinker. And today we have Sharon and Jax, and many of you, um, Sharon has been on the podcast a lot, and we know, you know, we always link her um fan stuff that she does and Jax also has a lot to let Jax talk about what she does for the pandemic. Hi. Whatever. Um basically I just write an analysis of new episodes that I post to Lily's Patreon. Um I think I'm most well known for being a bit of a prolific commenter on uh fan fictions <laughs> within that poppy land. That's what really got my name out there I think. Um that's pretty much it, really. I just I'm a hype girl from Midnight Poppy Land, and people deserve it. So, yeah. Yeah, and your analyses are also available on your Instagram. Yeah, yeah, they are. I highly it. recommend reading them. They're <laughs> hilarious, and they're very candid, and they always get my thoughts out there, and I love reading them. Yeah, I just <laughs> literally let it all flow out. Whatever's in my brain just comes out. Yes, so check those out, and they obviously your profile will be linked, so just click on it and you can read away. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so hopping right into the episode, we start out with you, who comes in all disheveled, saying, sorry, big bro, he got away. And Tora and Poppy look at him, <coughs> and he says, Mrs. Haru showed up with the neighbors and the cops, and three other units were broken into, which I want to get into in a bit. So we have a flashback, Gyu is running after the intruder, the intruder slips over the fence and wouldn't you know it he just like jumps into the water near Poppy's house and gets away in this speedboat totally not expected that is a really high drop yeah right. I didn't realize it can we can we, like, a high drop. can we pick this burglar apart yes. <laughs> like, like I went through so many motions or like thoughts in my head as I was reading this I literally went from like oh, okay like three units were broken into it's not targeted at Poppy to this person escapes in a speedboat and clearly has no need of the jewels that they stole from that one guy's apartment mm -hmm. and if they had come for the notebook what was the plan like to drop into the water with the notebook well plastic bag maybe but yeah, it's very puzzling. Like when I read the three units, I was like, okay, that makes it sound like it's a regular burglar, right? And then they stole stuff, right? The speedboat is like a little too high tech for an average burglar. Yeah, I mean, this guy has skills. For him, the way he climbed that balcony doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, I kind of felt like maybe it was sort of him breaking into other places was a way of trying to take the shine off the fact they were trying to get to Poppy. Um, but it doesn't make no, it doesn't make any sense why they didn't. Why they obviously went for the jewelry, but didn't get anything from Poppy. But they tied her up. Yeah. I mean, was Mister Lee in his apartment, and that's how he knew? It, it, there's a lot of unknown, a lot of unknowns with that. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, Gyu or Gyu or whatever sees sees the boat leave, so it's not like they're even being subtle about the boat. So trying mm. to throw them off. If, okay, if these people are specifically after Poppy, trying to seem like just a random burglary by hitting like multiple apartments is completely ruined by very obviously departing in a speedboat. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not subtle at all. It's super flashy. I mean, I genuinely had a first thought of, what is Goliath doing? And I was like, Goliath, Goliath is in Naren City. He can't be. He's probably still yeah. on the run somewhere, falling off a cliff. Oh. Well, but, um, life is very flashy and mm -hmm. seems to like the high life, you know, with the speedboat. And I think Lindsay tracked that, tracked that from the uh, Fast Pass group. She she was like, well, Goliath can jump down from high heights <laughs> 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 that we saw him jumping off last time. But then we have, you know, we saw 
guy's skin tone, this person's skin tone, and it was very light. So that's not like Goliath. So I yeah, and go ahead. Oh, no, yeah, you go ahead. Go on. No, I was just I was just zooming into that panel where you can see them in the speedboat. Because I was like, is the burglar mm. the owner of the speedboat or were they hired by whoever owns the speedboat? But the person at the wheel does not look important. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so either both of them have been hired by a third party or the burglar is the the main guy. I don't know how <laughs> to say it. Yeah, I don't feel like that burglar was trying to harm harm Poppy. He had opportunities. I feel like yeah. if he could climb off a balcony the way he did, he could have disarmed her, and he didn't. So there's yeah. a lot of yeah, a lot of unanswered questions there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I don't think that he wanted to harm her either. Yeah. Ah, I'm intrigued. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah. so he was like, ah, ah, damn it. And you know, Mr. Uh, the neighbor, Mrs. Lee, who's his fangirl, who find out her name is Mrs. Lee. I love her. Stay back, dear. It's dangerous. Will <laughs> <laughs> crush on him. So cute. <laughs> and it's like, can you believe the chick of that burglar? He got into Mr. Lee. Oh, it's not Mr. Lee. Sorry. He got into Mr. Lee's apartment and spiked an entire stash of jewelry, which is just Mr. Lee. I guess has jewelry, which is a little odd. Either Mr. Lee has a wife, or Mr. Lee is just you know a jewelry connoisseur. <laughs> I just realized. Yeah, those ties. <laughs> and they're like ah we didn't check if that girl on the fourth floor is okay she's living on her own isn't she mrs harboom yes that's poppy we can get the police to check on her too and he's like no 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 panicking <laughs> oh, she's fine, mrs. i was just helping her fix something at our unit just now <laughs> i mean he was pretty quick to make sure that i didn't go to poppy when he and my yeah. first thought was okay is she okay with that because to her this is just a random burglar there's nothing for her to assume it's connected to Torah or Quincy yeah. or anything. But like I that. thought it was, I thought it was mainly just because for Torah seeing the police is not. Yeah. Great. And then I thought back to and that. She, and she, thought, yeah. she probably would say, no, actually, you're right. You did the right thing. I don't want the police involved because she was aware of that previously when he said about, I will bring yeah. the police up if that's what will make you comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, she's in such a vulnerable position this whole night and having this taking out of her control as well is yeah. a lot, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and they, you know, they'll like, try to continue, they're like, but the poor girl's all alone in there, we must check on her. No, no, it's fine, Mrs. Zuru, and the police can arrive, like, uh, officer. Um, but he manages not to convince, to convince him not to come up as he tells Tora and Poppy. He's like, the cops just left, the neighbors are downstairs gossiping and shit. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> Drama in the building, they all commune and chit chatter. And now Torah's like, and you were asleep at your post because, and he's like, um, I was exhausted from the extra shifts and all that computer stuff I was working for you on for you. And he's like, God damn it, you didn't I tell you to stop with the part time jobs? You could have come to me if you needed more money. He's like, I'd be a effing charity case. So, what were your thoughts for you when you read this interaction? Um, Poor Gu got his pride knocked there <laughs> quite badly, yeah. didn't he? I mean, Tor is doing it because he obviously is trying to help him. Um, he's obviously frustrated that he's trying to help him as best he can. I mean, he's but at the same time, he's putting pressure on Gu as well by like getting him to do all this technical stuff for him. Uh, I mean, the tension racked up really, really quick. <laughs> yeah, Poor you can Poppy. definitely tell that Tor is still on edge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Poor Poppy just sitting on the bed, like feeling that tension rise. Yeah. So I happen to relate a ton to you because, yeah, I mean, I can't, I would hate to have to take money from people, right? Mm -hmm. But I totally really, I mean, like Tori is right, right? That's his job, right? His job is to like keep Poppy safe. Like, yeah, okay. So if Tori says, I will pay you X amount of money to keep Poppy safe for your shift at this, you know, this this apartment drop your other jobs like this is your salary right this is not a charity this yeah. is your job exactly but, but i totally get you I, I get it i don't think you made the right decision but i totally understand that um because i would hate to like have to yeah, yeah. i can kind of see that he was probably like you know towards like yeah okay drop your other jobs and you know maybe it's like well maybe he likes the feeling of being able to 
do that because what he does for Torah, even though I think he does love Torah, it's not his choice. Mm-hmm. You know, like he he does as he's told, and and the and the other things, it's just a different type of job. And maybe he also just thought like, no, I can do it. I can manage. Um, I kind of underestimated how much he was overworking himself or like maybe how time intensive or energy absorbing like this job for Torah would be mm-hmm. so I kind of understand but the thing is too like <clears throat> okay I, I get that there's like life or death on the line in a way you know and it's really important that he takes care of Poppy and looks after her but at the same time like he is doing so much you know all we've ever seen of you is him just jumping at everything that Torah says and like just immediately getting to it not questioning it like he just does it all the time and you know even now like he's just there backing him up and Torah is immediately so passive aggressive he's like oh and why were you sleeping at your job and it's like dude can I ever do anything wrong in your eyes Uh, anything right in your eyes and I feel like Torah is kind of repeating a little bit of like symptoms pattern yeah. and he probably Where, works without realizing it yeah like he is just he doesn't acknowledge the things that you does do and that he does do well he points out every single thing that he's not doing right and when you makes excuses or talks back he becomes violent mm-hmm. and like to me that's a person like repeating their abusers actions in a way um and I didn't realize that until we just started talking about (laughs) it's like oh wow this seems really familiar and in good defense he was exhausted but he didn't wake up to his phone going off of tourist run contact and that guy needed some sleep you don't fall into an exhausted sleep like that for nothing so yeah yeah, I'm totally backing him on the he's fell asleep gotta let him off a little bit (laughs) I kind of wanted to, this is not really related, but the other day I opened my Sims game um, where I have all of the characters in and <laughs> Tora was angry, Poppy was scared and Gyu was literally sleeping on a bench outside of the apartment. And I was like, what's going on? It was like the exact same oh, funny. in the story. Wow, that's hilarious. <laughs> that was a good yeah. laugh when I saw that. <laughs> So, Shireen, I share your sentiment. I'm just going to read the next two panels and then I'll get to it. That, that's my controversial yeah. opinion. Um, Poppy, while, because she heard that, you know, other people's apartments had stuff stolen from it, she goes to check in her drawer where she put Torah's ring. And she's like, oh, still here, Torah's ring and bracelet. That's where she put the stuff that he gave her all the way back in like 57, 56. And meanwhile, they're still arguing. And he says, I'm sorry. I said, I'm sorry for falling asleep and letting him get away. But maybe this wouldn't have happened if you told her. And which is, you know, he told her about all his mafia stuff. And then Torah slams Gyu into the wall, breaking a pot at the same time. And he does it hard enough that Gyu is like coughing. Anyway, so, and then, you know, he's holding him by the scruff of his neck and Papa's like, crap, what's going on with them? And then just Torah, Gyu, she thinks, what should I do? Just let them slug it out. And Gyu responds to her. He's like, stay out of this Poppy and this Poppy. You know, still super respectful. He always calls her Miss Poppy. And he's still coughing. He's like, I'm done with this effing bully. And Tora, Tora like looks out of control here with that the white the whites in his eyes. And he's like, say that again, kid. And he, you know, bumps his head into the wall. He's like, I'm just calling it as it is. Even if I messed up today, you don't have to behave like a big fat prick. And there were this wonderful, very like high tension fight. We have a comedic relief. Poppy's bra falls out of the window, out of the, the closet, and she's like, Ugh. <laughs> and she just looks mortified and they're still fighting and like why heck hell i am like hell you're not he's like have you ever looked in the mirror recently i'm a big fat brick every fucking day punk so, yeah <laughs> one of my favorite parts of that episode <laughs> very mature <laughs> uh, it was that's interesting how it goes from feeling so uncomfortable reading it to just having to laugh because it gets so stupid so fast yeah. That was the part that made me go, all right, this fight doesn't actually mean anything. We're all good here. <laughs> There's just yeah. a lot of tensions. I was really getting concerned when he first slammed him against that wall. I was like, okay, we've got another little tour as a human here and he's deeply flawed in a lot of ways. 
It's just reminding us that, you know, he's not perfect. That's fine. We need more of that. But then like, as it went on, I was like, no, he's not going to kick his ass. He's fine. <laughs> so I have to say when this whole fight happened, I was like, this is my red line. And I don't know, like up till now, whatever, if it was, if there was a guy around me, I'd be like, goodbye out the window. I don't care anything you say. I don't care how many times you apologize. Seeing you do that to your friend, your underling, the guy who helps you out all the time, slam him into a wall because he talked back, like, I'm done with you. <laughs> I would never give the guy my, the time of day ever again in my life. So that was my very visceral reaction to, to seeing this happen. Um, yeah, you know. I don't think that's unreasonable at all, to be honest. Yes. Like, I think that's a very smart thing to do. I grew up with Honestly, I, honestly. I grew up with three older brothers who would roughhouse all the time. And if someone didn't agree with them, he got slammed against the wall <laughs> like that. And you just kind of left them to get on with it. But um, that's my brothers. That's a totally different situation to be in front of someone who you clearly got feelings for and who has put you on edge not that long ago. Um, so, yeah, I totally agree with that. And, like, knowing he's in the mafia too right i mean like yeah obviously that would have given me pause also but i never had a, an episode in the in the comic which made me feel like this um i guess because in all the other times he was violent it was towards people who were antagonistic people who weren't necessarily good people but and and you know the fight that he had with poppy was not violent it was verbal you know disagreement which everyone has but this is this like physical altercation with his friend that to mm -hmm. me was yeah. Not <laughs> yeah. So, like, even as we were reading through it now, especially the initial part until the bra falls out, I could feel myself like tensing up. I was getting really uncomfortable. And I felt that way too when I first read it. And it was basically like this thing where, like, when Guy was like, no, like, I'm done with this bully, I was like, shit, like, he's really calling Tora kind of for what he is again just like Vincent bullied Tora mm -hmm. and when the bra thing happened and then they kind of started you know cat fighting a little bit and you have this like silly panel where you know Guy was like jumping in his face and you know they're talking, yeah, they're talking about Tora's prick you know it's like it gets silly and I feel like that's that was the moment where, for me, the tension was relieved, where I was like, okay, we went from Torah just using violence potentially as like a repercussion for a failed job or whatever, to them just, yeah, basically kind of behaving like idiots and like brothers do, mm -hmm. where, you know, they might get into stupid arguments and it just reminds me of this thing where like when I would fight with my brother, not quite as physically, although we did when we were younger as well. But you know, you're like, you're, you're arguing and you're shouting, you start throwing all of these things at each other that not only are they, you know, you don't mean them anymore, you know, you're like just trying to hit them where it hurts, but also they just become silly, you know, where you eventually just kind of start laughing and you're like, okay, this is really dumb. That's how I felt going through the episode. But the moment I reread it again from the beginning, I'm back at this like, you know, like tensing up point. So, I yeah, I feel like Tor was definitely an arsehole. And I honestly, the minute he grabbed him, I was like, okay, we've got arsehole Tor again. It's fine. Um, but I like that he stood up to himself, you know, and I wonder how often he stands up to Tora. Is he one of the only ones who does actually put him in his place? Because he didn't hold back. So the guy's got some balls on yeah. him. And yeah. I really appreciated that. I was like, I think he needs that. I think he needs more people around him who do put him in his place and remind him that, you know, you can't treat people that way. I mean, he quite literally used his weight to throw at him. And, yeah, I just... uh appreciated just seeing Gyu like give as good as he could I can't speak for yeah. Dora yeah yeah I was surprised yeah. that Poppy was on the show sorry I was surprised that Poppy was she like, was really calm yeah 
like I would have probably been like Mindy at least in that moment and been like you okay know. you're breaking my stuff I just had a stranger in here doing the same thing out like leave yeah just step outside and when you both calm down you can come back in you can apologize and then we can be adults and talk about this mm -hmm. yeah she was dead calm I kept expecting to see like the shaking around her you know some kind of trembling anything but no nope, she was ready to just be like done with this shit <laughs> yeah I mean I guess yeah reading it again it is pretty fast like it is just honestly a couple of lines and then she does react pretty quickly like she first goes to check you know her um like well she checks that as the argument is kind of like starting um but yeah it's only like a few lines and then um you know it's like what proves my point and then we have this little flashback of how he and broke his leg last time where they're also fighting and he's like i'm gonna kill this motherfucker and he's like you stop big bro's gonna and then he snaps his leg which i don't get it that's not very like this doesn't make the situation better i don't know i don't see how that like how that that little presentation of how they broke how he broke his leg last time is like i don't know a better version of what we were picturing in our heads i don't know but it, um, Goo gets it a bit, doesn't it? Goo gets a bit mouthy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, like I a broken my, my brothers and I used to fight physically when we were when we were kids. Like up till I would say about twelve. I was twelve, and the next one was like eleven and ten. So we would definitely fight physically up till then, and not after. And I don't know. You know, it could also be it's definitely like a cultural thing. Obviously, we know Torres and the mafia, and like, but there are certain you know hard places or different cultures where it's much more acceptable to fight physically than others but I don't know I guess I guess it's just not part of my milieu and not something I could ever tolerate I have actually never been around a fight like this mm. like when my brother like I said when my brother and I were little we did fight like really roughly we lived in a very very small room together and we would fight really roughly like bleeding heads and whatnot you know but for grown-ups or like teenagers I've never witnessed a fight like this I have mm -hmm. to put my hands on so I've witnessed far too many mm -hmm. so this um, doesn't surprise me that much yeah that's probably not a good thing <laughs> I mean I definitely just from interacting with different, different people in the fandom like yeah different people do have different experiences mm -hmm. um yeah, I'm trying to think the most I can, I had a I had an uncle who uh, had a terrible temper, so he would throw chairs and food, he'd pick up trays of food and throw them at the wall. Uh, he would throw chairs, he wouldn't throw them at people, he would throw it up just around. But he was the most like scary thing I witnessed as a, as a young person. Yeah. That was really much the worst of it. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's big gaps between me and my older brothers. Um, and there have been times when I have pulled one of them off when he had his hands around his throat. Um, and I, your adrenaline's just pumping. I don't know how I managed to pick up a guy of that size and throw him, but yeah. Yeah, unfortunately that was a, that was just one of many times. I've grown up with a very dysfunctional family. <laughs> I mean it kind of makes me sad that you were like around this because even just reading about it is unsettling. Yeah. <laughs> There's no positive to it, unfortunately. Um, just, I mean, he doesn't deserve a broken leg. <laughs> I mean, you can be mouth off as much as he wants. He didn't deserve getting his leg snapped. But I wonder if that was just Tora. I shouldn't defend him, but I just wonder if he just didn't realise his own strength on that occasion. But yeah. At the same time, he has threatened to break the other leg before. So uh, yeah, that's true. He doesn't. Yeah. Do Break a leg or not, you probably shouldn't throw him to break the other leg if someone's not doing what you want them to do. So, yeah. plus, I mean, there's that like speech bubble that I guess is. Well, I was gonna say it's Quincy, but Quincy doesn't really call to our big bro, so it might be like Damien or something mm -hmm. saying like you not big bro's gonna, which makes it sound like at least whoever said that knew what was gonna happen. Right. Mm. Well, yep, this is, I think, you know, Lily has said that if she would meet Tora in real life, she would be like, run in the other direction. So I would hope so. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I mean, it is complicated. Like when you, because, you know, not everyone grows up in the best of circumstances and you obviously absorb the, the ways of behavior that are around you. And sometimes you try to be better and maybe your better isn't good enough for, you know, whoever you want to be with, but it seems like Poppy is able to tolerate it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I do think it's one of the difficulties of, you know, dealing with people who grew up in, in adverse circumstances. It's like, how much do you judge them? How much do you hold them responsible for? How much do you accept? How much do you want to keep yourself safe from this kind of behavior? Yeah. I think for me, I want to, at some point, whether it's during or at the end, some kind of acknowledgement that he's gone to some kind of therapy, that he's doing something to try and better himself, not just for public, but for himself. Because we've already seen that he's, you know, his brain, his mind goes to dark places. And that's not something you can carry on trying to cope with yourself. So, yeah, I like to hope at some point Tor is going to uh, help himself. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it's it's definitely obvious he does want to. Mm. I don't know if he's necessarily thought about improving himself in the context of his relationship with his like underlings. Mm. I don't know if that's really occurred to him yet, but it's clearly he doesn't want to be part of that life anymore. But, yeah, we'll see more, I guess. Anyway, their fight yeah. does end pretty quickly because Poppy says, both of you, this isn't a freaking mafia clubhouse. Stop that right now. Oh, wait, did I? Yeah, okay, a little bit more. And you and Tora are both huffing and puffing. You know, I think they're glad that they were stopped so that they can have a breather, time to calm down. Yeah. And, you know, she's looking distraught. They look extremely agitated. Tora just completely turns around decides that he's like, I'm going for a smoke, right? Which is his way of calming himself down. And, you know, he has his hands in his pocket. Like they both look pretty ashamed of themselves. Yeah. And he's like, if you change your mind. And Poppy Doesn't works. it feel like he's trying to bait her to say no? Mm. Hmm. You know, like, he's like, yeah, like if you don't, if now you don't want to come with me anymore, you know, because I, did this with you like no yeah it's kind of no. like do you still are you still able to to love me or to accept me even after doing something yeah. like this i probably yeah, would have snapped at him in that moment the look on her face is really vulnerable yeah yeah he's really putting her on the spot right i mean like he just showed her a really ugly side to himself and he is basically saying like can you tolerate this are you still going to come with me but he also doesn't look happy that she said she's gonna pack his bag, her bag, though. Like he looks, it's kind of. I don't know. He just looks sad, almost. It's like I don't know. Happy. I'm poppy. Yeah, it doesn't. In that situation. Happy. Yeah, like if. But if he would say that, I'm like, okay. I my my apartment's been broken into. We've already established that I'm safest with you. Why would you even ask? if I still want to come, like, even if I didn't want to be around you right now, it still kind of feels like the only option. Like, I feel like it's kind of a dick move, to be honest. I don't know, man. I feel like Tora is, like, just fishing for her to kick him to the curb in a way. But then later he says he doesn't want to get dumped, so. Yeah, he's testing her. He's definitely testing her, whether he realizes he's doing it or not. Yeah. It's very unlikely. Um. Yeah, he's testing just to see how far she's going to go, I guess. Yeah. But we've seen her push back, so that's a relief. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, that sad look on his face when she says, I'll pack my opener bag and I'll be ready in 15 minutes. I think that that's kind of him being sad that he is what he is. And, you know, maybe there's a part of him that's relieved that she is still wanting to come with him. But I think he said that she has to deal with someone like him, you know, and he, we know he hates himself already and he feels like he's not worthy and he just proved to himself that he's not worthy. You know, he did something that he's not proud of. So that's how I read his, his sad, sad face. Yeah. Basically self-sabotage yeah. in a way. What? Yeah. Basically self-sabotage in a way. Mm, yes. Yes, that is it. I can definitely see a little bit of that, like I reflect back on some, you know, experience fights that I had with my parents, right? Where, you know, you push back against parents, push back and you act like a total jerk, but you still want to make sure they love you. Like, like <laughs> so, yes. It's one of the things yeah. about myself and therapy this past year was basically what I was doing with my marriage was self-sabotaging it. 
because I've gone through such a huge loss and such a, a massive trauma that I just I was doing it just to test that he was going to stick about then you know I was doing it yeah. um but once she opened my eyes to it and I could start seeing what was happening I was like and he'd go to me like is this a test is this one of those that she told you to watch out for and I was like I don't know <laughs> I was like, we're just, let's yeah. just hope it's like subliminally ingrained into my mind. And I haven't done it in a long time, though, so obviously it's worked. Mm. So I guess yeah, sometimes what thing. you need is like to call out a behavior and to become aware of it. And then you catch yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And you can stop yourself then. Because if you're not aware, you know, if you can't pinpoint it, you don't have a, have a name for it or whatever. Communication is key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. With yourself as well as people around you. Yeah, and I think, I mean, relationships are always are so complex. It's <laughs> never ending, uh, you know, stuff that you can learn, stuff that you realize that you're not doing the best way possible. I said to my husband the other day, I was like, we're not vibing. And he was like, what do you mean? I was like, we're not vibing. And he was like, waiting for me to be like, can't do this. I was like, just having a bad few days. It's okay. We're just not vibing at the moment. Mm -hmm. We'll come out the other side at some point, relax. <laughs> yeah he, yep. he, he went on the, on the alert he was like what, what is she getting out here i was like just being honest we might as well put it out there it's acknowledged there's yeah. a bit of a tension between us and it you know what that worked just cleared the air quite quickly yeah i think you need to figure out ways to reach each other as well like even if you can't solve something in a moment where tension is high mm. um like for us it's when we're tired when both of us are tired you know some shit's going to happen. Like, you know that someone's going to pick an argument out of thin air and it's going to be so stupid. And you know, as you're doing it, it's so stupid. But because we're tired, we have no patience. We have no understanding. It's it's really terrible. And today I worked really early. And when I came back, like we did groceries and it was really exhausting. And I mean, I had been up since 5 a.m. And so, you know, I started to do dishes and putting stuff away. And I was a bit like, snappy about things you know I really didn't need to be um and he isn't really a talkative guy but he knows the words mean a lot to me so at one point like he was just over in the living room I was in the kitchen he's like hey I appreciate you <laughs> just uh -huh. like, I know that he's purposefully like saying it like that because he knows that I respond well to words but it's also so funny because he he doesn't really do that a lot <laughs> he doesn't just say something like that so it was really really sweet though and then I gave him some kisses because he responds to like touch more and it was just Aww. like it's like oh I appreciate you too <laughs> that's very sweet yeah and then you just can't be mad but you just need to figure out like how you can diffuse that tension and not keep building it up until it has to explode mm -hmm. and I think Torah needs to learn that for himself and they need to learn it with each other too yes yeah. Definitely. It's still so well for them too, isn't it? I mean, it's been a matter of weeks. They've got so much to learn. I mean, he's still not even told her the full truth yet. And there's stuff about her that we don't have a clue. So we've got a long journey ahead of us. The bait of anyway. Yeah. Yep. Jira, do you want to take over from now? All right. So Tora's going out for a smoke and leaves you back with Poppy, which already surprised me. I was like, I kind of thought he would have immediately taken you outside as well. And now we can see that Poppy is shaking. So we talked about before, you can now see her knees wobbling and she needs to take like a second to sit on the bed. And you notice it and he's like, Miss Poppy, are you okay? And she says, I'm good, I'm good. Just a little weak in the knees right now. And he says, ah, crap, we broke your plan. Like, thanks for noticing. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, it's fine, you don't worry about it. Um, and he says, um, I didn't mean to lose my cool or get you involved. Sorry about that. I'm just so done with his stupid old ass sometimes. I'm <laughs> such a gentleman, by the way. Like, he right away yeah. apologizes to her. Such a good guy. I felt that with yeah. how respectful he was when he was like, stay out of this Miss Poppy. And I was like, dude. <laughs> yeah. He, they, they're really consistent about calling her Miss Poppy. Mm. And to me, it's weird because... I live a very informal life um, and I mean part of the reason why I like working in like an English-speaking environment is because you kind of just 
you don't have a formal you like they do for example in German and you just call people by their first name and it's it's so much more relaxed than you know in Germany where people use like Miss Azaban like every single time you're like why are you calling me by my last name <laughs> strange yeah it's like being in school yeah yeah we were never allowed to call them by their first name so yeah of course yeah I just I just think it's a respect like a respect thing but yeah I hope it's not because of her friendship relationship with Tora it's because they genuinely have respect for Poppy mm. which they clearly do yeah she's like an outsider she's not part of their mafia life like she's a civilian so she has to get treated like that yeah so you is sweeping up the plant because he's so sweet um and he starts like grumbling and he says occasionally we get into these dumb fights and poppy's trying to like make him aware of something and at first i didn't get it she's like uh you He's like, I know he looks like a god and shit, but he can be a real dumbass like the rest of us mortals. <laughs> she's like, you, like trying to get his attention. This was so cute. Says, but Big Bro's usually calm and steady as a rock, where everyone goes to him when they need to get shit done. So, so don't get mistaken about him, Miss Poppy. He's pretty mature and reasonable most of the time. Um, so it says uncomfortable with silence. So Gia's just talking because she's not. Yeah. She's not talking also, because Tora is cool. opening the door. Yeah. But I think also this interlude was put in to reassure us that this isn't so common for Tora. Like, yes, they, you know, do fight, but don't worry. Don't worry, gals. You know, he's normally okay. Yeah. But it's like a callback as well to when Quincy was trying to cover up for Tora. Mm. Jack, you wrote about that in your analysis a bit. Oh, but back when she had that little moment with Quincy, yeah, he um, I don't. Know, it's really my mind's just completely blank for a second there. Um, <laughs> it's okay, you don't have to. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. My mind is just completely blanked. I don't know where my it just went. Um, you two carry on a second. Let me write for my friends <laughs> what was I gonna say I mean it's clearly trying to defend him in a little bit he doesn't want to make yeah. a get a bad impression of him um but I mean he kind of did that on his own anyway didn't he really <laughs> just that it was. Yeah. yeah the boys can't fix everything that Tora messes up no they can't and she picked up on that of Quincy didn't she I mean when she said to him like Oh, I can see basically she sort of said to him, I see what you're doing here, but it doesn't excuse the way he just treated me in the in the coffee shop. And Quincy didn't even know what he said to her in the coffee shop. He just knows whatever it was. Yeah. He can't backtrack for him. And Goose kind of backtracking a little bit here. Like I'm just slating him, but but he's not that bad. I yeah. So yeah. yeah. But so even though he doesn't know that Tora is behind him, he immediately is like, oh, crap, I didn't mean to bitch about Big Bro. Which, like, okay, that's a strong reaction. It's like, don't tell Big Bro I said all that. I was just blabbing. It's just like, you behind you. And Tora enters like, too late, punk. Uh, yeah. so, I like that he called him punk. That just diffused it again, didn't it? It was like, okay, yeah, I mean, he's heard what he said and he's, he's back to being Big Bro now and not big scary toy yeah. yeah but he was horrified he's like big bro what the fuck are you doing back here uh, i love that i'm going back a little bit just that go like doesn't do uncomfortable silence <laughs> yeah and he's just he's filling it and i don't think he was even aware he was trying to work through his own thoughts while yeah. he's just sitting at I'll just do a bit of chill time right now just just want a minute <laughs> and he's like Ugh. yeah so i just appreciated that little moment <laughs> yeah but the horror on his face when he realizes he's real. Tor's there and he's been busted uh, and then tori says my stupid old ass is here to pick you up from daycare he's like uh you weren't supposed to hear that uh, i don't yeah. think it was all that bad that he said yeah I mean, how old is Goo? Did we ever find that out? 
because he keeps calling him old. He's like 26. He's making <laughs> me feel old by calling him old. Right. Yeah. I mean, oh, I, I do remember that Gio at one point admires Tora's muscular body mm. um, and says, like, I had something like since when did you look like that or when did you start training or something and then Tora said that was when you were still playing in your sandbox yeah so I do feel like you might might be quite young like 20 if not younger mm. like mm. he seems older to me but from the comments that they've made it feels like he might be pretty young and especially because I feel like if if you're just two years, three years younger than someone, you're not gonna fall into calling him big bro. Big bro, or so have it being called back kid or punk back. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna assume also 20. Like we see him when Tor is a teenager and Giyu looks like maybe he's like 11 and Tor is like 16, so. Yeah. yeah. Just well, like managed to cross paths that young. Like what is Giyu's background? school maybe because when when Giyu brings the others like Damien and them to meet Tora that is in a classroom that's where Tora like ends up throwing a table out the window mm. um so that's in a classroom which but I'm also like Tora was bloodied up and wasn't he holding a bat I think that was um that was in someone like a restaurant like he went to beat up the restaurant proprietor for me probably not paying his mafia dues or something I don't think that particular part was in the classroom. Are you sure? I took it to think it was, it was high up. I thought it was in a classroom. I mean, it was a very profound moment seeing him all scary looking. I mean, he did look kind of scary, especially. I mean, he clearly, what did he have? Like half, half slave at that point? I think so. Was he even a muscle younger, shirt, maybe? But yeah, I mean, there's, there's obviously a gap between them in years. Yeah, there must be a significant age difference, I think. Mm. Okay, I've just, I've called it up. And it's, a, it's interesting because I did see it as a classroom, but Mindy, I think you might, you might be right because there's like really high bar chairs. Yeah. I mean, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, like, but the window that they're throwing it out is I mean it looks to be quite high. Yeah, yeah, I hear right. Yeah, oh. that part does look like that. So it's a strange, strange situation. But anyway, yeah, it doesn't matter really. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's interesting. I feel like there's so much we don't know yet about these characters um, that I really I'm want to know. Always left with so many questions. <laughs> All right, yeah, so. It sounds like Tora yeah. has calmed down already. You know, he's the 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 sentence he says, "My stupid little ass here to pick you up from daycare." It sounds it's pretty affectionate if you think about it, because he's implying like yeah. he's his parent he has that kind of really watching out for him relationship. So I think calm down. He came back really quick as well. I was expecting him to be away longer. I think maybe he did realize he was like, "Yeah, maybe I should leave properly alone for a couple of minutes." And yeah, have Q there with her. He probably knows how much he talks. <laughs> um, Shows how comfortable he is around her as well, I guess. Yeah. So Tora says, Come on, Miss Poppy needs to pack her things. You get in her way, which I thought was so cute. He called her Miss Poppy. And he's like, Huh? I'm just standing here. <laughs> and Poppy says, Yeah, it's fine. I can still pack. So she doesn't want you to go or doesn't need him to go or whatever and then Tora's just like her lady thing <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, oh I really felt for Poppy in that moment <laughs> mm -hmm. I know but also he's so hot in that image <laughs> sometimes Tora brings to mind that like Jessica Rabbit quote that's like I'm not bad I'm just drawn that way <laughs> <laughs> cute that's a great line. So Poppy realizes, yeah. Poppy realizes that like Tora has seen the bra, but also like you, he's so clueless. He's like lady things, what like sanitary pads and shit. <laughs> Nothing I've never seen before. I'm a bachelor, not a monk. <laughs> oh, I kind of appreciate 
that you well, now we have some news, some news about you if we were ever wondering yeah. Yeah. I kind of appreciate that you highlighted that as in like it's not a big deal because it makes me really uncomfortable at the idea of there being men out there who do think that's something that should just never be yeah. spoken of so the fact that was highlighted by a guy who was just like what is it I think no big deal I yeah. really appreciate that it's a small thing but it was something that I was like yeah yeah Thank somebody you. raised this guy right Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> I appreciate it too. I appreciate it. I don't like it when guys are like, like, oh, why are you like tampons out here or something? Like, yeah, I don't know, because I need them. Like, <laughs> what do you want? Why are they in our shopping cart? Like, yeah, yeah, I need those. Exactly. Um, so Tora says, let's give her some privacy, okay? And goes like, sure, big bro. Meanwhile, Poppy's just freaking out because of the bra thing. I love her expression. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Gia says, but yeah, uh, but you just wanted to tease her, didn't you? And I was like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> but, oh, oh, yeah, I was like, why is she limping? But it's because she hurt her ankle. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, also, maybe Tora keeping his arm around you might also still be like kind of like apologizing without verbally being able to actually say that. You know, it's, yeah. it, it is, it does strike me as affectionate. And I don't think he's ready to quite re yet verbally apologize. And hopefully maybe Poppy yeah. will teach him to do that. But I think that's his way of being kind. Yeah. But he kind of does. Like, he doesn't say yeah. that he's sorry. But he, I, th I think that when he says, I appreciate the shit you do for me, got that. Yeah. I do yeah. think you need to be off of your prideful rage basically to be able to to say that mm -hmm. yeah for sure yeah but you doesn't let it go he's like yeah yeah better big bro or i'll be pissed for real i love how the expression swipes her bra it's hilarious <laughs> <laughs> very determined mm -hmm. it's like seriously what other tech guy would put up with your phone destroying tantrums and so i was like i don't have tantrums the fuck you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> but Poppy is just happy to like hear them chatting. She's like, "Phew, I'm glad that they've made up." Yeah. Um, and then Tora still doesn't leave. And they're like, "Oh, hey, Bobby." I'm like, huh? Did you check if anything's missing in here? She's like, "Ah, yeah, I did a quick one." <laughs> um, the important things like my bank cards and documents are intact, but I'm I'm not sure if I'm able to go through the rest tonight. I don't really want to stay on in here, so I guess fine. I'll drive you back here tomorrow so you can take inventory for the rest. And we'll figure out what's going on with the break-in. So don't worry. Just get some rest for now. He says, yeah, don't worry, Miss Poppy. You'll be safe without Big Bro. A man from a day keeps him the away. I love that line. Yes. So good. Yeah, I've got a few men around me throwing mantrams on the daily. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully not in my life. <laughs> but that was, was brilliant. I loved it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lily, like, um, yeah, <laughs> Lily just comes in with the humour at just the right moment and in yeah. just the right way, flawlessly executed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, and Tora thumps him somehow, maybe against the wall again. He's like, oh, what the fuck? Get moving, we don't have all night. Um, what is the click? <laughs> no. I think it was the door. Ah, uh, okay. The door closing. They, we can still hear them. Um, and then so Gio calls him out again. He's like, that was hella awkward, though. Like, you suddenly remember to tell her to check for missing things. What if she finds out you don't have much experience being on this side of the crime scene? Oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> sniggering at him. Yeah. And Tora's like, she already knows, okay? Seriously, Gio, I'm fucking spent from today. Give me a break. And I didn't forget. Just have a lot of shit on my mind. Okay, okay. Wait, what? How much did you tell her? And it's just so cute, Poppy. It's just like, you know, kind of laughing about them being silly. And then Tora goes, enough to not get dumped. Oh. It's like, oh, I missed the conversation somewhere. Yeah. He did yes. try to say the couple thing. Yeah. And then got perfectly timely interrupted. Yeah, and it's funny because he viewed that in the sense of like, I'm telling her this so that she can make the choice to dump me or not. And yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting that he sees it that way because he's like enough to not get dumped, but really, really like, it would be like, I told her I kept stuff away enough to not get dumped. Like he didn't 
because if he told her more stuff, he might get dumped, but he didn't finish telling her everything. So it's kind of an interesting yeah. phrasing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think that flash was like, does we're, we're enough to be dumped? Also, what haven't you told me? I just keep coming back to the same thing. That girl's been through ahead of the day. <laughs> I just <laughs> exhausted for her. No. Yes. I think her blush also is because when when you hear dumped implies that you're in a relationship, yeah. right? So that's like her blush is like, oh. When did that happen? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we come on to the um, <laughs> very exciting bit <laughs> of the so basically a couple hours have passed which i'm also like how are you not passed out how are you not sleeping already mm -hmm. for a long time i would have probably knocked out in the car i did think um, it said it was a couple of hours i was like what have you been doing like <laughs> yeah so it must long. be past yeah. midnight now yeah. mm. so tora comes in and he's like hey your turn and we just see his feet for the moment so that we get the the view from Poppy's point of view, and she says, "Shoot, sorry, I didn't bring a bath towel. Do you have any? Any?" Uh, mm. <laughs> she's just blushing furiously. Like, she's, any she's extra her towel? bag. Her bag is very like hint hint. It says, "I'm sexy and I know it." So it's like, "Yes, we know." Very There's going to be more. So we get rock hard abs that are dripping with water. <laughs> <laughs> And then we get a little bit further up where we finally see like Taurus jaw and he says I should have one somewhere in the house which is also like a weird thing somewhere in the house you're holding a towel dude where did you get that one from <laughs> oh <laughs> my god wherever I find him I am yeah. yeah no I'm not surprised not everyone is very organized Yes, yeah. so and I think then, us know like yes there's a linen closet that's where you got the towel from but not everyone is blessed with such great wisdom <laughs> I'm not at all saying this because the person I live with is slot. No. <laughs> yeah. But he does offer to get it for her, and we get like basically full body shot of him half naked and like one of those camouflage joggers. <laughs> yeah, this is the first time we got him. We got some of his abs <laughs> like way, way back in like the first or second episode when yeah. he's you know on the couch. And then since then, he's been in a tank top, right? I think that's the most, so this is the most we've seen him. The most she's yeah. seen of him is when he was in the tank top and the sweatpants. Um, and she said, he's not a piece of me, he's not a piece of me. And now she's got that full ab front of him. Yeah. I wonder if he's like, well, Poppy's likely to be mad at me. I have to do something to like make her not so <laughs> mad at me. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Yeah, fair point. I just wonder where we're going to go from here because it's a bit of a mean clicking as to not follow up on it next week, but also it's a weird night for them to make yeah. out now. Like, yes. Yeah. Okay. If I tell you a story, a little TMI, but my husband and I once had the most giant knockout, horrible, horrible, like gut wrenching fight ever in our life. It was like about a very serious topic, it was like a buildup for a long time super serious issue it was horrible like it's the worst fight you can imagine and then you know we argued it out for a while a couple of hours whatever and then at the end we had like a our little you know we probably had some emotional breakdown it was like it was probably a lot of tears and whatever and um at the end my husband was like he wanted to have sex i was like what we just had the most horrible fight ever i can't i was like we just like we said the horrible things about each other we like yes we apologize and we're like i was like i'm super emotional i was like no freaking way but like that was his resolution. He's like, oh, we argued it out. We like feel, you know, now we made up after like all these hours. And like, I could not, I could not. And, yeah. But apparently some people, this is their way of like, oh, it's over. Now we can feel close again. <laughs> well, that's at least something, you know, if the argument is actually resolved. My least favorite trope in, I think it's especially adult romance books is when they argue and instead of resolving it, they have sex. They start like tearing their clothes up. I'm like, it's been a whole book. You have not resolved a single one of your discussions. Mm -hmm. Having sex is not a resolution. That's not, that's not fixing anything or I don't like it. I mean, 
I'm not saying it can never happen or you should never do this. I just don't like it when it's used as like the way out of dealing with difficult subjects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't, I can't see Poppy being into it right now. I don't know, like she had a very traumatic day. She was with him, without him, like both, everything in her life was just like messed up that day. And here you throw in Torah being sexy. It's like, <sighs> But also if they do make out, I'm not going to be upset. <laughs> doesn't look very, like he's not really pulling the smoldering look on her though. He kind of looks a bit, I don't know what the word is. I want to say wary, but I don't think that's the right word. Um, I don't know. It's just something about the look on his face. Like maybe like cautious or hesitant. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's where I'm looking for it. Yeah. Maybe. Mm. It's very distracting. Let me, look up, let me look at this word. Let me look at this word. If it's what I think it is. Um, okay. I would, because the word that was coming to my mind, but I'm not sure if this is the right use of it. Is sheepish? Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's a good word. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I'm Very curious. Good. I'm curious where where it'll go. I know, like, yeah, I think fandom is conflicted because obviously, like, everybody loves sexy time. But yeah, I don't know if that's like what Poppy would be feeling, or even him. You know, he seems to yeah. be like he seems to be unaware of like the effect that his body can have, which is a little naive in my opinion. Like the guy is that dense I don't know <laughs> but is he because he does use his body when he needs to he did it charm right yeah mm -hmm. so he does he use it and I I mean he's joked with Poppy a lot that she like would look at him you know like he's joked about like he notices when she yeah. looks at him and when she's into him and also I mean if we go back to that moment on the balcony <laughs> which I still cannot get over where he licked her <laughs> or you know where he starts like stroking her leg maybe affection is a bit subconscious for him as well but <laughs> I just I I don't know I haven't listened to the the podcast episode yet and I really want to where he licks her because I need to know what people are thinking about this moment <laughs> yeah so we did we did talk about that and you know what it, it, I can see it being parallel it kind of does remind me that because we're like oh you know we had all this tension and now he's like I it's a way of maybe making up or like he does still feel attracted to her and like yeah yeah it's very similar if if he's doing this intentionally and he has sexual intent then yeah it would definitely feel similar huh. I just feel <laughs> really really vulnerable at the moment like really and yeah I mean he's never pushed her so at least we haven't got to worry about him trying to coerce her into anything but I hope there is some snuggles. Yeah. I hope there's some snuggles. I don't know how I would feel about pro like sexual progression. Like even if they don't fall on have sex, but just, I don't know how I'd feel about it. I mean, the thing is too, I can like psyche wise, I can understand if Poppy in this moment suddenly is like, okay, I want to try it. Like I want to go for it. I'll go for something. Um, because it is such a adrenaline loaded day anyway. Maybe she just wants to take some of that power back for herself. Mm. Yeah, but I don't know how I would feel about it. So it would really depend on how it's kind of presented, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do feel a bit on edge on what's going to happen next week. So I've got no idea where it could go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little bit like um, in Let's Play during the hiatus when everyone's like did Charles go for her while she was drunk right. <laughs> everybody was so conflicted <laughs> yeah. whoever's yeah. on next week is probably in for a treat mm -hmm. alright oh, um. thank you so much to my current patrons Susie, Lady Libris, Lily, Jenny, Haley, Maria, Molly, Veronica, Emily, Emily, Joe, Rochelle, Saucy Tuggles, Meg, Anne Rose, Priya, Alexa, Misty, Laura, Joanne, Patty, Jen, Imelda, Esther, I'm watching your tours, Poppy, Seed, Marie, Jen, Emily, Jean, Jen, Aaron, D, K, Lily, Beckett, and Miranda. Your support is truly appreciated.